Dialogues Working with two or more sensors Kinesonic synchrosis The video shows the way the relationship between the movement of the body, the position of the sensor and the characteristics of the sound can enable the emergence of kinesonic synchrosis. Synchrosis is a compound term made up of the words synchronism and synthesis, coined by film theorist Michel Chion and with the aim to capture the meaning-making process that takes place when we watch a film. Chion explains that the term synchrosis names, quote, the spontaneous and irresistible weld produced between a particular auditory phenomenon and visual phenomenon when they occur at the same time, end of quote. More recently, Karen Collins employed the term to describe the interaction between a player's actions and the resulting sound in video games. Here we use the term synchrosis to bring attention to the meaning that can emerge either for the mover or for a spectator during the interaction between sound and movement. Sophie is wearing one sensor on the neck and another on the right ankle. The sounds for each sensor were chosen in order to reflect the distance between the body parts and the floor. When Sophie is upright, the sensor that is worn on the neck is the furthest from the floor and the sound consists of a distinct pitch trajectory alongside unpitched granular texture. The sensor on the ankle is the closest to the floor and is assigned a low-pitched tonal sound. The placing of the sensor on the neck dictates a tilt of the head backwards which causes the face and the eyes to turn upwards. The interaction between the direction of the face and the eyes, the sweeping gesture of the torso and the dynamic profile of the sound creates a sense that the sound is above and around the body. This creates the impression that the body is molded by the sound. The sound that is triggered through the sensor on the ankle is a low-pitched cello sound. The sound is excited by quick, direct and strong gestures of thrusting the leg and this intensifies the sense of effort and heaviness. In this instance, the location of the sensors as well as the characteristics of the sound create a distinct kinesonic sense for the upper and the lower body respectively. This accentuates the difference between them, but also the possibility of creating relationships. Working with two sensors offers the possibility to introduce a new role in the creative process. A person outside the improvisation can direct the exploration by making changes which correspond to different rules. This is an image of the computer interface. The yellow window on the left shows the monitor for the sensor that Sophie is wearing on the ankle and excites the cello sound. The pink window on the right shows the monitor for the sensor that Sophie is wearing on the neck and is assigned an electroacoustic composition. Maria is operating the technology and switches between the two sensors by bringing the volume up and down whilst Sophie is improvising. The aim here is to exploit a key characteristic of sound and movement interaction, the mover's tendency to focus on the body part that carries the sensor. As Maria controls the volume of the sound from the outside, Sophie's attention becomes directed to the body part that carries the sensor which produces the sound that can be heard. At the end of the exploration, both sensors are turned on and Sophie explores the two sounds together. Here she's finding a movement that allows her to trigger each sensor successively 
through a rocking and jumping movement that transfers the weight between arms and legs. She then returns to the excitatory gesture that she discovered at the beginning of the improvisation. This is a strategy that is often employed as part of the interaction. Once an excitatory gesture is established, it tends to serve as base to which the mover returns in order to re-establish the interaction between sound and movement and take it into a new direction. <laughs>